My name is Anthony Taylor Grider. I was born female, uh, currently identify as male. I'm currently a phlebotomist at Cookville Regional Medical Center. And I work anywhere from on the floors to the ER, sometimes just down in the lab. Well, about three months ago, I started taking hormones, natural hormones. Um, just in the, that short amount of time, I took a video from two last year and this year and noticed I've already had a voice change. Um, I've, of course, cut all my hair off, started dressing you know, in public as a guy, started finding. Um, and just a couple weeks ago, I come out to my parents. Um, I come out to my work. Got my name changed. I actually started to make a video blog about my transition from female to male. I have not started my surgery or my testosterone yet. I'm hoping to be able to afford my doctors to start testosterone soon, but not sure when. Um, would like to have top surgery by before this time next year. It all depends on finances. I told my uh, my couple of my fellow employees that I felt real comfortable with. You know, this is the process I'll be going through. You know, this will be my new name. And then once I had my name changed, I told uh, Human Resources uh, Vice President of Human Human Resources first um, to make sure that that wasn't going to affect me at work or I wasn't going to lose my job over it because that was a extreme fear I had. This would be the letter I received the day after I got my name changed and went to work and told them about it. Um, of course it meant a lot because of course they put Dear Mr. Grider so it meant a lot. I've worked with him for five months at the hospital there. Yellow fabric and make her a giant like We were friends <laughs> before we worked together. <laughs> I did have a few people come to me and ask me questions about it like what does this mean? What is he? What is he doing? Is he gonna go through all the surgeries? Is is he a boy now? And a lot of people, well, when I say a lot, I just mean like two people, came to me and said, "I I'm confused because I don't know if I should call him a boy or a girl. I don't know if I should say him or her." And I said, "Well, ultimately, it's gonna be a him." There are some employers here in Tennessee that do have in their um, equal uh, opportunity employment of gender um, orientation or you know gender identity as something they protect but now like I said at the hospital they do not but they surprisingly enough they were super accepting about it and you know my boss told me as long as I do a good job I have nothing to worry about. It's a very real fear uh, because a lot of people are fired uh, and um, and they find themselves unemployed, underemployed, and of course it's no secret we're in the middle of a recession. So people are very afraid, um, and what happens is a lot of people have to leave their hometowns, and um, a lot of trans people tend to migrate into the bigger cities where there is a little more safety, there's a lot more tolerance or diversity, um, uh, and it's a shame that a person feels like they have to leave a place they actually want to stay. Uh, and that they're forced out of the job that they enjoy and that they're productive with simply because somebody else has a, has a problem with it. As a kid, um, my, my mother trying to put me in dresses and dress me as a girl and buy me girly clothes. Um, I always felt awkward and I couldn't figure out why. And um, then I started kind of stealing my brother's clothes because I have an older brother and kind of stealing his clothes and kind of, you know, would wear them to school and things like that. And I felt comfortable then. But of course, you know, when it comes to family outings or, you know, holidays, it was always in a dress, always in a dress. And I always whine to my mom because I told her I, I, I shouldn't be wearing this. You know, don't buy me that, I don't look good. And she always told me, oh, well, you know, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, and I didn't feel right.
when somebody would mistake me for a boy, I wouldn't say anything about it. Um, especially, and, and I'll remember this for the rest of my life, and it kind of what started to make me think and, and start, you know, make me feel like I was a boy was in elementary school, my mom cut my hair real short. Um, and all the kids would tease me and call me a boy, call me a boy, call me a boy. And at that time, I was being taught, you know, you're a girl, you're a girl, you're supposed to act like a girl, it's supposed to be pretty. So I would holler and scream at them, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, I'm a girl. But all the time, I felt that they were right. He's always felt this way, but he was scared to tell me he felt this way. Because he was scared I was going to leave. And how it first arose was I was like, I think you might be transgendered. And then he kind of felt like he had a case of bricks removed from him because he's always felt that way, but it was always scared to address it. And so from there, I did a bunch of research. And basically, I've just been mainly like his number one like supporter and advocate. For the first year and a half we were together, she was, you know, dating a, a girl, and all of a sudden she's going to be with a boy. Um, so that was hard for her to take. We actually got engaged last May. We were out at the, the club at Forbidden here in Cookville, um, and I was performing drag that night. I was, a dra uh, I was doing my drag king. And um, after she did her performance, because she also does drag every now and then, um, I had to go out and sit in the crowd with fellow friends and, and some family. And uh, uh, a couple performers went, and then I went, and I did the song Tyrese One. And I come out and I performed and kind of walked around to the crowd where she didn't think of anything. And at the end of the song, it says I'm down on one knee with one ring. Well, right before that, I pulled her on stage and I made her stand there. And I kind of walked around and sung a little bit. And I walked back to the stage right before he said it. And when he said, well, down on one knee, I dropped to one knee. And it says with one ring, I got the ring out of my pocket and the DJ cut the music off. And I hollered out in front of everybody, will you marry me? The DJ got over on the microphone and was like, well, you know, I, I guess with the tears, that's a yes. And she shook her head and ran off stage. Yeah. <laughs> I think you won. <laughs> We're really close. Um, have a very open relationship when it comes to communication and what's going on. She always wants to know how I'm feeling, you know, whether there's anything she can do for me. So, I mean, it means a lot and a lot of the research that goes on and things like that and new, th new laws and, and new procedures and stuff like that. She always researches them for me. And yeah, definitely, you know, every day it looks a little bit better. This is about two and a half weeks into, into healing. I, the only places I really had any, any trouble is uh, right around through here and it's from the lipo. From the get-go, I was like, I want my boobs gone. Like, I could do that shit tomorrow. Wearing that binder is like torture. Like, I imagine it's pretty close to what a corset would have been, you know, in the, back in the olden days. It's kind of like an A shirt that's really tight. The front of it is compressed pretty much the whole way through from the top all the way down to the stomach and it's very difficult to get on not very stretchy the main concern that we had about the surgery was uh, of course scarring we didn't want to have terrible scarring we didn't want to get any type of infection we wanted it to be as you know as healthy as we could we could get it to go as smooth as we could get it to go we really didn't want to go away from Nashville. I mean, I know that there's a lot of plastic surgeons in Nashville. No one that we knew had had any of the top surgeries done here. They would go to Alabama or Florida or Ohio even. I was just very relieved. I was very relieved. And, you know, every, every day after the recovery, it would look better and better. You know, no 
nobody said that it was going to happen this quick. We thought it was going to take years.